Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, July 28th, 2023, and today we are going to be going through a 2024 election prediction between President Joe Biden and Governor Ron DeSantis from the state of Florida. Now, the inspiration for this video really just boils down to a number of data points that have seemed to suggest that Ron DeSantis is the more electable Republican. But as we get closer and closer to the 2024 nomination season, that becomes increasingly and increasingly more likely that we do not see a matchup between Ron DeSantis and Joe Biden. As such, I've decided to make this video very early out because I can imagine that in around six to seven months from now, this won't even be a distant possibility. Now, there is one thing that has been clear as Ron DeSantis has maintained his presence, nationally speaking, as a 2024 contender. For reference, back in the start of 2023, Ron DeSantis had roughly 37% uh, of the national Republican primary vote share. Donald Trump, on the other hand, had 43%. Donald Trump at this point in time, again, January 1st, 2023, 2023, led Ron DeSantis by a mere six to seven points nationwide. It was far from the trouncing 30-point lead that he holds today, but you can see that over time, as Ron DeSantis, in his name, became popular and while recognized, his support actually dipped. There is a clear correlation here that shows that the more that voters know about Ron DeSantis, the less they like him whether that be general election voters or national Republican primary voters. And today, Ron DeSantis stands at the lowest point he has ever been since the start of the campaign season. In fact, at the start of the year, as I said, he was at 37%. Today, he stands at 15.5. So, why am I telling you this? Well, it's important to note that Ron DeSantis has decreased in terms of likability and electability over time. This is not my first Ron DeSantis Joe Biden election prediction. I've done these in the past and almost every single time we've seen a very close and competitive race and in more often than not, Ron DeSantis has defeated Joe Biden nationally speaking. And the 2024 polls might seem to suggest that that no longer may be the case. We can see that early on, while Donald Trump, uh, sorry, while Ron DeSantis did lose some polls to Joe Biden, that generally was from a lack of understanding of who Ron DeSantis was in the first place. When voters were faced with this decision, knowing the two candidates, more often than not, Ron DeSantis was leading. In fact, on average, Ron DeSantis had the upper hand over Joe Biden for months on end. That seems to have changed recently, where Joe Biden now leads by around two points nationwide. Now, this is not some type of phenomenal lead for the president of the United States. I'm not trying to argue that. But what I am trying to say here is that the tides have changed. And whether that's a combination of disgruntlement from the GOP, lack of enthusiasm around his candidacy, or in general, general election voters, independent specifically, shifting away from supporting Ron DeSantis, whether otherwise might have, just knowing him as Florida governor versus now his national figure, that might have all influenced the way that the polls are trending in Joe Biden's favor against Ron DeSantis. But don't get me wrong. A two-point race will always be competitive, and Ron DeSantis offers something that no other Republican in this primary field offers. A trouncing victory in a swing state in the last election. You can see here in 2022 that Ron DeSantis won by 19.4% in the state of Florida, a state that Donald Trump won in 2016 and 2020 by margins of 1 and 3% respect, uh, respectfully, respectfully, respectively. I don't know why I said it like that. But Ron DeSantis turning a Trump plus 3 state two years later into a Republican plus 19 state that had tremendous down-ballot effects that turned the Senate race into Marco Rubio plus 16.4 turned the House races in Florida to a phenomenal margin for Republicans, 20 to 8. When you look at the overall uh, popular vote here, actually, it's not going to show you, but you will see in the state that Republicans demolished Democrats in some of the swing districts, plus 15, right? Other districts, plus 27. The Republican Party did very well in the state of Florida. And Ron DeSantis, to many people, is the reason for that doing. To me, to pundits, to whoever it might be. But there is still pushback against Ron DeSantis because he is challenging the incumbent president who is largely responsible for his election in the first place in 2018. But as times change, so do voters, so do people, and people aren't always bound to vote for the candidate that might be the reason for their success in the first place. For instance, in South Carolina, Nikki Haley was governor when she appointed Tim Scott to become senator. 
Now they're running against each other for the same 2024 nomination and are roughly neck and neck for fourth or fifth place. Not exactly the best place you would want to be, but just goes to show that people don't always back the candidates or the supporters that got them there in the first place. Now on your screen, I am just characterizing all of the states that we know how they're going to go in this potential Biden-DeSantis matchup. It's a matchup that I think many Republicans are hoping that they see because they believe that Ron DeSantis is more electable, but recent polling seems to suggest that Donald Trump is perceived as the most electable Republican in 2024. It isn't just that they are supporting him for the nomination. Roughly 60% of Republicans believe that Donald Trump has the best chance at beating Joe Biden in the 2024 election. Now, I don't need to tell you this because I think you would already know, having watched my videos, but maybe not. But Donald Trump is certainly not the most electable Republican, at least at this point in time. He has a lot more scandals and baggage than Ron DeSantis. And although Ron DeSantis has veered into the levels of homophobia and uh, you know anti-Semitism, there are reasons to believe that even with that baggage, he is more electable to the mainstream general voter. Because quite frankly, the American public isn't as well-informed on these scandals and on these, you know, things that might drag down a candidate on a more localized, more statewide level because there's too much to pay attention to in our mainstream media. Think about how much coverage Ron DeSantis received for the case of the homophobic video or the anti-Semitic video or whatever it might be. These are things that are discussed on Twitter in election verses that do not make it to the average American voter. But the indictment, Hunter Biden's laptop, those are things that do. Now, I'm not here to criticize or applaud the mainstream media for the way they cover things, but it is very clear that based on the way that they do so, it does reach audiences very, very differently. And I think that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, I will say, though, there is a very big, uh, you know, reason to uh, push back uh, against Ron DeSantis from the average American voter that aligns with the Democratic Party on abortion, aligns with the American public, uh, sorry, aligns with the Democratic Party on LGBT rights. You know, a lot of these things I think will matter should the Democrats play that card, play that, you know, not card in a negative connotation, but, you know, use that to their advantage, which I absolutely think that they will. But generally speaking, I do believe that Ron DeSantis has a better chance of the presidency than Donald Trump at the current state. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. I do not believe either of them have the best chance at winning the nomination. I talked about this in a previous video. Tim Scott, Nikki Haley are amongst the some that I think, should they make it through the nomination process, less than 1% chance, 2% chance, max. Should they make it, they win the general. I don't know if that's the case for Donald Trump, and we will see if that is the case for Ron DeSantis. So let's go ahead and keep moving on. I mean, we can reasonably assume that Florida would be roughly a similar margin. They aren't exactly going to abandon their favorite governor in the general election. I think we could see it veer down to likely a 12 to 13 point margin. But for all intents and purposes, Florida will be a red state with Ron DeSantis on the ballot. And it's really hard to see how he isn't. Now, one thing that I think we do need to recognize is that because Ron DeSantis isn't perceived even though he, you know, very well aligns with Donald Trump on many of the issues and many of the stances and sometimes is even to the right of him. Perception is everything in American politics. I talk about this every time. I always say it. Perception is everything. It doesn't matter how right wing or left wing you are. It's about how the voter perceives you. And to many, Ron DeSantis is perceived as this moderate. He's perceived at least in a way that is not as extreme, not as out there as Donald Trump. And that's a benefit because it quells the concerns of voters like the ones in Alaska that voted for a Democrat in the House race because Sarah Palin was too Trumpian. She was too extreme for the state. It quells voters in states like Texas that might otherwise be obliged to vote for a Democrat or maybe vote for a third party candidate because they believe that Donald Trump specifically is too extreme for the state. Given Hillary Clinton's 2016 performance, there's no reason to assume that all of a sudden Texans just liked her, but rather disliked Donald Trump. You can see in 2012, Mitt Romney won it by 16 points. Fast forward to 2016, Donald Trump wins it by just nine. Fast forward to 2020, though Joe Biden did have one of the best performances in Texas in years, Texas still went to Donald Trump by six points, but it was narrower, significantly narrower than where it was at the start of the century when it went to George W. Bush by 21 points. My main takeaway from here is that Texas is a ruby red state in history, but is no longer. It is a state that has become increasingly and increasingly and increasingly and increasingly more 
close and competitive, but Donald Trump was really the catalyst for that from 2012 to 2016. With Ron DeSantis, though I think it'll still be roughly six, seven point margin, just based on demographic trends, it's not the perfect storm the Democrats need to narrow down Texas by a substantial margin. They need it to be Trump. They need the population growth. They need the voter turnout. Texas at its core is still a red state, and Ron DeSantis will absolutely tap into that. Now, that isn't to say that Democrats don't have their own fair share of states. I think based off the last election, some of them we can assume are a little bit too far gone for a Ron DeSantis victory, especially as Ron DeSantis veers closer and closer to being the next Donald Trump, which isn't a good thing for these states. For instance, Virginia, Colorado, New Mexico are all states that I can imagine would easily go to the Democratic Party compared to how they had to fight for it in 2008, 2012, even 2016. These are states where Joe Biden all won by double digits in the last election, and Ron DeSantis, again, will be perceived in many people's eyes as the next Donald Trump. But I do think there will be some narrowing down. Colorado could have been a safe state against Donald Trump. I think we're hovering around the same margin. Hovering isn't the best news for Democrats, but a victory is a victory. It's a winner-take-all system. That's all that really matters. Now, for the remaining 134 toss-up electoral votes, I think that you can reasonably assume some of them in the same way that we did Virginia, Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, and Alaska. What I mean by that is I think Iowa and Ohio are going to be Republican states. I think Maine's 2nd District will maintain that Republican identity and the GOP will win it by a likely margin. Ron DeSantis will win it by a likely margin. You're talking anywhere between 5 and 15%. That brings them all the way up to 219 but the pathway to 270 becomes increasingly and increasingly less likely as you look around to the other states. For instance, you have a state like Minnesota, where I do believe the Democrats are on track for victory. You do have another state like New Hampshire, where Ron DeSantis was supposed to be this token child for the mainstream GOP, and that simply just didn't happen. He was supposed to defeat Donald Trump in this primary didn't happen. In fact, he's losing support uh, nation uh, sorry statewide. You can see in Maine, where this was supposed to be some strong area that Ron DeSantis was going to uniquely appeal to this, you know, part of the country, as was many other parts. But regardless, you can see here Ron DeSantis losing in Maine, losing in New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire, swing states from 2016, arguably so. Clinton only won Maine by, I believe, three points, won New Hampshire by less than half a percentage point. My main takeaway is that Ron DeSantis came into this race a lot more electable than he is now which is why that pathway to do 70 becomes less and less likely. But that isn't to say that Ron DeSantis on his own wouldn't be able to win some states that Joe Biden wasn't able to have a landslide victory in the last election. For instance, states such as Georgia, I could imagine seeing Ron DeSantis as the slightly more sensible Republican could see a shift back in the suburbs that might have been afraid to vote for Donald Trump, but could hold their nose and vote for Ron DeSantis. The same way that in 2022, Raphael Warnock won in, you know, the top Senate race, right? He went to a runoff, but he was able to do very well on the national figure, or, or sorry, on, on the initial figure, getting 49.4% of the vote. The reason why that's so impressive is because on the House generic vote, Republicans won. In the governorship, Brian Kemp won, get this, by eight points statewide. You have a Republican governor on the ballot winning by eight points on the same one that a Democrat's leading by one. Why? Candidate quality, candidate association. Donald Trump is the catalyst here. Georgia reverts back when it's not Donald Trump. The demographic swings have made it enough so that Georgia will be this, you know, red state. But I do believe that where we are currently, it's going to be narrowly red. DeSantis wins it, but not by much. And I can guarantee you the next election, even with DeSantis, I could very well imagine it uh, flipping. So Georgia Bumps up Republicans to 235. Some good news for Democrats, though. I'm still confident they win Michigan. I believe that that is a state that you're not going to see DeSantis really appeal to the white working class in the way that Donald Trump did. And I think that sort of gave away where we were going to go from this. I do think that Joe Biden wins Wisconsin. I think he wins Pennsylvania, again, by very similar margins to 2020. It's interesting to see how American politics, for one, has gotten so boring to a point where, you know, Democrats and Republicans are doing roughly the same as they did four years ago. But that's the state of the nature with polarization and not so much shifting demographics outside of the Sun Belt. So that's where we're at. But Joe Biden wins Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and with it, Nebraska's second congressional district, which I think would also go by a likely margin. The trends there are just 
completely a same for the Republican Party. So 270, Joe Biden defeats Ron DeSantis. I know it might be an unpopular take, but I think currently speaking, DeSantis doesn't excite the GOP crowd. He doesn't appeal to the base the same way. He doesn't appeal to the swing voters outside of the Sun Belt, which is why I think he wins Georgia, why I think he wins North Carolina, right? I think that he does well in those states. But for the remaining ones, we're not seeing it come through. I think Joe Biden wins Arizona. I think he wins Nevada, putting him at 287. Arizona, you can see, even with a Democrat that may not be perceived as super strong, super electable, Katie Hobbs, for instance, she still wins against Carrie Lake because the candidate was perceived to be too closely associated with Donald Trump. It might be unpopular to have Arizona blue and Georgia red. It happened in 1996. We're not in a similar climate. But what I will say here is that Arizona in 2022 outright on election night voted for Mark Kelly by five. Had, again, a lackluster Democrat that, you know, you know, Katie Hobbs is doing very well now with approval, but at the time was not perceived to be this electoral juggernaut, and yet she won. Why? Because voters punished the Trump wing very heavily. House races, super competitive. Governor race, super competitive, but Democrats won. in the Senate race, not so competitive. Democrats pulled ahead. Georgia, on the other hand, even with the runoff, even in the initial one-point lead for Warnock turned into a three-point victory, not as impressive as Arizona. And that 1% to 2% does make all the difference in states that were decided by just 10,000 votes in the last election. Nevada, historically blue. I think it'll maintain its blue identity. Ron DeSantis doesn't really appeal, I think, to Latino voters the way we think he does. Florida is an enigma. Beyond that, really not much else. But he does improve. He wins North Carolina. He wins Georgia, flips it back to blue, from, from blue to red, but ultimately still comes up short at losing to Joe Biden, 287 to 251. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.